30 years after his adoption, man sees own face on missing persons. He looked at the drawing and had the strangest feeling. The blue eyes, the light blonde hair. It was all too uncanny. It was like he was looking in a mirror. This picture told him that his whole life had been a lie. But where did that leave him? A wave of nausea rose from the pit of his stomach. He didn't know who he was anymore. Stephen Carter Jr.'s life had started in the Hawaiian Islands. He knew this much. But he always had an unsettling feeling that he just couldn't shake. There were missing pieces in his life story. He knew he was born with the name Tenzin Amiya on January 16, 1977. But one day he stumbled upon something that changed everything. For Stephen, it had been an ordinary workday at his medical software sales job in Philadelphia. It was lunchtime, so he whiled away the hour by idly scrolling through his phone. But then something strange caught his eye. It was a breaking news update from CNN. Little did Stephen know this particular story was about to set him on a road from which there was no return. Stephen read the news story and immediately took interest. It documented the missing person case of Carlina White, and there had finally been a breakthrough. Carlina had been reported missing from a hospital in New York shortly after she was born. As an adult, Carlina made an earth-shattering discovery of her own. She had solved her own case. Carlina White was just 19 days old when she was reported missing. Under mysterious circumstances, from the hospital where she'd been taken for a fever, a woman disguised as a nurse had taken her, and she had no idea she was even on the missing persons list, thinking her kidnapper was her own mother for all those years. Carlina White's story was a game-changer for Stephen. Stephen had always thought he'd been given up as an infant and was then in the care of the state. He'd been living in an orphanage and subsequently in foster care on the island of Oahu when he was just a few months old. Stephen had few memories from this period in his life, but he remembered that he yearned for a family. One day, his dreams came true. In 1980, United States Army officer Stephen Carter Sr. and his wife Pat were stationed in Hawaii when they paid the orphanage a visit. When they saw three-year-old Stephen, then Tenzin Amiya, they knew he was the one. On September 23, 1980, the happy couple officially adopted him. They were told by the staff at the orphanage that Tenzin was half-native Hawaiian, but something just didn't add up. Tenzin had pale skin, blue eyes, and blonde hair. Steve and Pat thought nothing of it at first and resolved to give the little boy the best life they could. They renamed him William Stephen Tenzin Carter after his adoptive father, and life improved dramatically for the young boy. The family left Hawaii and settled in Medford Lakes, an affluent area in New Jersey. Stephen lived a privileged life with the Carters and put his past behind him, but he never expected it to come back to haunt him. The Carters tried to remain as open about Stephen's origins as they could. They even celebrated his adoption day, calling it Came to Be Our Boy Day. But as Stephen grew older, he started asking questions that they didn't know the answers to. Aside from being told that Stephen's birth father was ethnically Hawaiian and the dates on his birth certificate, which had strangely been issued a month after he had been born, there was very little information to go on, but today that was all about to change. Stephen had studied at Penn University and had become an adult, but his curiosity about his early life was something he couldn't shake. It was like an itch that couldn't be scratched, a gnawing undercurrent of his entire life. Now in his 30s, he'd finally uncover the truth and shake an entire nation to its core with the findings. It all started with a simple home DNA test. Stephen, now married, had received the DNA test as a Christmas gift, and the results finally give him answers he'd been looking for, or at least they uncovered the first piece of the puzzle. The test revealed that he had Scandinavian roots, which made sense given his complexion. But most startling, there was no trace of his Hawaiian ancestry in his DNA. It was just as his suspicions were mounting that he came across the breaking story about Carlina White. Intrigued, Stephen impulsively decided to take a look at the database of missing persons on missingkids.com, which is associated with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. With trembling fingers, he punched in the birth date that he believed was his own for his entire life. Then he refined the search to include missing persons results from Hawaii. He searched for his birth name but found something so unexpected that he almost fell out of his chair. Stephen had been told his birth name had been Tenzin Amiya 
but the name wasn't there. However, there was another name, Mark's Panama Moriarty Barnes, and this boy had been reported missing in July 1977. But it was the artist's rendition of the missing boy and what he would look like 30 years later that sent a shiver up Stephen's spine. The artist's rendition was uncanny in its resemblance to Stephen. It was like looking in a mirror. Stephen refused to believe the truth at first. He frantically sent the picture to his friends and family who were just as astounded as he was. Stephen was shattered by the revelation. That's when his wife, Tracy, insisted that he dig further to uncover the mystery. But when it was all laid bare in front of him, did he really want to know the truth? Stephen wrestled with his emotions. It wasn't too late to just forget what he'd seen and continue to live out his days in a blissful lie. He could pretend he'd never seen the picture and life would go on. But the curiosity gnawed in him like an ache in the back of his mind. He'd made his decision. He had to know. So he pulled out his phone and started dialing. The officers of the Honolulu Police Department were skeptical at first. The chances of solving a case that had been open for more than three decades were staggeringly slim. They needed more evidence. Stephen was given another DNA test to discover his true identity. But he would have to wait eight long months for the results. But when they came in, the case was blown wide open. On June 21, 1977, California native and Vietnam War veteran Mark Barnes was in Hawaii in the small town of Hualu with his girlfriend Charlotte Moriarty. He was working in the tropical paradise as a journalist and life seemed to be perfect. The couple had a six-month-old baby named Marks. One day, Mark was gardening and Charlotte informed him that she was going to take a stroll and Mark thought nothing of it. But Mark never imagined that his girlfriend and beloved son were about to disappear into thin air. As the minutes turned into hours and then into days, Mark was devastated. What had happened to Charlotte and his son? He searched for them high and low, but he never found them. After three heartbreaking weeks, Mark got the local police involved and reported the pair as missing. But there were no leads. The pair had seemingly vanished without a trace. He continued to search for his missing family for two years, but to no avail and he became a broken man. He waited for the call that never came, and the wondering haunted him for the rest of his life. It was discovered later that Charlotte had somehow made it to the other end of the island and was spotted trespassing. After police interrogated her, she lied about her identity. She claimed to be Jane Amia and said that her son's name was Tenzin. She fabricated Tenzin's birth date and even stated that his father was native Hawaiian, but she didn't manage to hold on to her son for long. Charlotte was placed into psychiatric care and Tenzin was surrendered to the state and sent to an orphanage. He was only six months old. Poor Mark never knew that his son was only 30 miles away in the orphanage. When Charlotte was finally released from the psychiatric hospital, she vanished without a trace. But there was a final player in the mystery who never gave up the search. Mark's had a half-sister who refused to give up. She was eight years older than her half-brother and her mother was also Charlotte Moriarty. Jennifer Monheimer had been living with her biological father in New Mexico when her little brother disappeared in 1977. Jennifer was traumatized by the tragic disappearance and she never stopped looking for her mother and brother. It was in 2001 when she decided to renew her efforts and they paid off. In 2001, Jennifer traveled to Hawaii and reopened the case of her missing brother with the police department. An artist rendered a drawing of young Stephen and it was realistically enhanced to reflect what the missing boy would look like in his 30s. This was the heart-stopping picture that Stephen stumbled upon 10 years later. And the DNA test from the Honolulu Police Department confirmed everything. The case had finally been solved after three decades of searching. And most surprisingly, the case was solved by its own subject. Stephen Carter Jr. had no idea that he'd been born Marks Panama Barnes Moriarty and that he'd been a missing person for almost his whole life. The news shook him to the core. He'd solve one of the longest missing person cases in American history. But there was one thing left to do. The media flurry about the case finally died down, and after a few months, Stephen was ready to meet his biological family. He began by contacting his half-sister, Jennifer. She was elated and floored by the whole ordeal, and she finally had closure as to her little brother's whereabouts. Next, Stephen reached out to his father, Mark. When Mark answered the phone and Stephen told him the story, he was at a loss for words. All he could exclaim was, wow, over and over again. But then he had a question for Stephen. Where was Charlotte? Unfortunately, she was never heard from again, and her whereabouts 